Jonathan Pollard, non-compete and trade secrets attorney in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And I'm going to talk today about non-compete litigation and forum selection clauses. This is a complicated and very interesting topic in the realm of non-compete litigation. It's really for the legal nerds out there and for anybody who needs a fairly urgent explanation of how forum selection clauses operate in this particular realm. So let's start with the non-compete agreement itself. The non-compete agreement or the employment agreement will likely contain a number of other provisions. Among these provisions will be a forum selection clause. It will also include a choice of law provision. Let's use a hypothetical because that makes things so much easier. We have a company that is called Florida Wine. Florida Wine is a Florida-based company. Florida Wine always wants to litigate things in Florida for a number of reasons. One, it's in their backyard. They, they have a sort of home court advantage. They have their own attorneys here. They feel comfortable operating here. But two, particularly on the non-compete front, Florida Wine wants to litigate in Florida because Florida law is favorable to employers. It is pro-corporate on the non-compete front. So Florida Wine is a national operation. Florida Wine has employees all over the United States of America. No matter where these employees are based, Florida Wine has them sign a non-compete agreement with a Florida Forum Selection Clause and a Florida Choice of Law provision. This means exactly what it sounds like. If Florida Wine sues an employee who is from California or Oregon or Wisconsin for violating the non-compete agreement, that employee is going to be forced to defend himself in Florida court under Florida law. Now, where do these things get tricky? Number one, if you watch some of my other videos, you are aware that in some circumstances, where you get hit with the cease and desist letter, in some circumstances, your best strategy is to pursue what is called a declaratory judgment. A declaratory judgment involves you going to court first, you filing the first lawsuit, you're basically suing the other side and seeking to have the non-compete agreement declared invalid or unenforceable for any one of a myriad of different reasons. So, if you're seeking a declaratory judgment and there's a forum selection clause, this may complicate the situation. Suppose we have the exact hypothetical that we just discussed. We have Florida Wine, it's a Florida company. Suppose John Smith is in California and he leaves Florida Wine, he goes to work for a competitor. He gets a cease and desist letter. John Smith now has the opportunity to go into California court, sue for declaratory judgment, try and convince the California court that it should not apply Florida law, but instead should apply California law, under which the entire thing is going to be declared invalid and unenforceable because California does not recognize not compete agreements in the employment context. That is why forum selection clauses are so important. That's where things can get very tricky. So what you need to do is, one, you need to be aware when you sign these agreements that if it contains a forum selection clause, the court is likely going to uphold that clause. They're likely going to find it enforceable. They're likely going to force you to defend yourself in whatever forum is provided by the contract. Two, if you were in a situation where you may need to sue for a declaratory judgment, if you were even considering that option, you need to understand the interplay between your lawsuit as a plaintiff for declaratory judgment and the forum selection clause. Are there ways around these clauses? Depends on the language. The language may either be restrictive or it may be permissive. A restrictive forum selection clause is going to be written with language that contemplates an exclusive form. In other words, an exclusive forum selection clause, a restrictive forum selection clause is going to say exactly that. It is going to say this matter is subject to jurisdiction exclusively in the courts of Miami, Florida, or in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida. It is going to say it is exclusively subject to that jurisdiction and it shall be governed solely by Florida law. If it's not written that way, if it's written in a more permissive manner, if it says the parties agree to venue and jurisdiction in the Southern District of Florida, that's a different ballgame. That's permissive. That means that, yes, 
you've agreed to be subject to jurisdiction in that particular location, in those particular courts, but not solely, not exclusively. In the latter situation, if it's written in a permissive and less restrictive manner, i.e. it's not exclusive, in that situation, John Smith, the guy who worked for Florida Wine out in California and is now being threatened with a lawsuit, he can technically file a lawsuit somewhere else. And he can say, look, the forum selection clause isn't exclusive. Sure, I've consented to jurisdiction in Florida, but that doesn't deprive this court of jurisdiction because Florida doesn't have sole jurisdiction. And he can seek a declaratory judgment that the non-compete agreement is unenforceable. A third point about forum selection clauses and non-compete litigation. In many instances, the company will go after the former employee. They will also attempt to go after the new employee, okay? So John Smith worked for Florida Wine. John Smith now works for Pacific Wine. What is Florida Wine going to do? Well, they're going to sue John Smith, but in many instances, that's not it. In many instances, they're gonna sue John Smith and they're also going to sue Pacific Wine. Now in this hypothetical, Pacific Wine is a West Coast operation. They have operations in California, Idaho, Washington, Oregon. They don't have anything even close to the Mississippi River. They are entirely Western United States. If Florida Wine files the first lawsuit, they're going to do it in a Florida court. And they're not just gonna name John Smith as a defendant. They are going to name Pacific Wine as a defendant as well. What's their theory going to be? Well, likely their theory is going to be tortious interference. Their theory is going to be John Smith had a contract with us. He had a non-compete agreement. Pacific Wine is interfering with that agreement. That's tortious interference. They're going to have another variant of the tortious interference claim as well. And that variant is going to be Pacific Wine hired John Smith. They're now using confidential information customer relationships that John Smith has. They're using his knowledge, his contacts that he gained through us, and they're using those to interfere with our clients. Because remember, Florida Wine is a United States national operation. They do business out there, and they're saying Pacific Wine hired this guy, John Smith, just so they can go and steal our clients. So they're interfering with our client relationships. So then all of a sudden, you've got a lawsuit filed down here in the Southern District of Florida, Miami Division, where Florida Wine is suing John Smith for breaching his non-compete agreement, maybe for theft of trade secrets, and for tortious interference. And they're also suing Pacific Wine for tortious interference. And it's, a, it's an ugly situation, but it's a situation where if the facts allow it, if the, the non-compete agreement is written in such a way that would allow it, John Smith has the opportunity to pull the rug out from under Florida Wine, sue them in California, and go full speed ahead trying to get a declaratory judgment. Is it going to be foolproof? Is it going to work in every instance? Absolutely not. There are no guarantees in these types of situations. But it is a strategic option that people need to be aware of in fighting non-compete cases. You can actually go from being the uh, potential defendant in the Southern District of Florida, defending yourself all the way across the country from where you really are, where you're based, and in a state where the law is more favorable to the non-compete plaintiff, to the ex-employer, to the company. You can go from that situation to being the plaintiff, driving the lawsuit, being the one pushing the lawsuit, out in a potentially more favorable forum closer to home. So to recap, you have a forum selection clause. These things are usually going to be enforceable. They are generally binding unless there's absolutely no contact with the forum whatsoever. Courts are going to uphold them. But the forum selection clause might not be exclusive. It might not confer exclusive jurisdiction on a particular court. It might be more permissive, in which case lawsuit could be brought elsewhere. So if you are in a situation where you have the facts to justify granting a declaratory and judge, uh, rather a declaratory judgment, or you have the facts to even seek a declaratory judgment and possibly give your side some leverage, then you need to look at this form selection clause and you need to figure out, okay, where can we file this? Can we file in our home state? Maybe the law is more favorable here. Another consideration, third parties. Is there a risk that third parties are going to be wrapped in under this form selection clause 
and forced to litigate this case in a place where they might not really have many contacts otherwise. If you have any questions, you have any concerns, you want to talk about a non-compete case, and I do mean that legitimately, even if you might not be hiring a lawyer, even if you aren't sure what you're going to do, even if you say, you know, I, I've never litigated anything before, I, I don't want to know what I'm doing, if you have a question about non-compete cases or non-compete litigation, give my office a call. If I'm busy, I'll call you back. If I'm not in, leave a message, talk to my secretary, talk to my assistant, I will get back to you because I love these cases. This is the main part of my practice. This is what I do. This is my passion. And if I can help you, I would be more than happy to do so. Jonathan Pollard, non-compete and trade secret attorney in downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thanks for watching and have a good day.